But we're back on Lake Sakakawea. August, which I tell you what, August is a big time for transporting zebra mussels. So make sure you pull your plug, put your plug in, obviously, before you load your boat. But I tell you what, drain your libels, drain your boat, because you know, this is the time of year to move stuff around when, when these zebra mussels are in larva state. And people say, oh, the birds are going to move. Lake Sakakawea is a long ways away from zebra mussels, okay? No duck that's molting right now is going to take it to Lake Sakakawea. We're a long ways away. We're protected right now, so let's keep it that way, because I tell you what, this is some of the best fishing in the country. And if you want to change it, Zebra mussels are going to bring on a lot of change. Will there still be walleyes out there? Absolutely. But I tell you what, nobody wants this to change because this is some of the best fishing around. And so meeting up with Matt Liebel. You guys have had some great fishing out here, huh? Yeah, it has been oh, fantastic. It's, I mean, it's really unbelievable how much this reservoir just keeps producing like every day. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, once in a while you have to move a little bit, but you can go find fish pretty much anywhere. And it's, uh, it's I just keep hearing awesome. all the fish reports and I finally had to come out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you could come out. You know, this is a beautiful place to begin with, but I think at six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> it's even prettier, the fog coming out of the water, the sun's just starting to peak up above the horizon. It's supposed to get hot today, so we're gonna try to get out here early and see how long we last here, but uh, from everything that I've seen, just from tournament weights to just fish reports, you name it, I mean, I think Lake Skakawea has been some of the best fishing in the country. Set it up on the ramp, but uh, what's happening out here is pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty awesome summer. Like it's you wonder when they're gonna get the dog days, and it just they just keep biting, and it's just really good quality of eater sized fish and some big fish mixed in too. Like it's just amazing how healthy this fishery is right now. Yeah, best way to say it. But yeah, let's get out there and go. So we're running lead core line. Beauty of lead core is you can pull up pretty fast. You put these baits down into deep water. We're marking a lot of fish in that, well, there's some shallower, but 20 to 24 feet is where we're seeing them. And so we're just covering water with lead core and we're just basically contour trolling. We're trying to stick right along a brake line. Some of these brakes can be pretty sharp and a little tricky to stay on, but uh, I love trolling crankbaits. Love trolling crankbaits on Lake Sakakawea. And I know you do too. Yeah. <laughs> we got something here. All right. I don't know what, but. How does he feel? Feels okay. All right. I'll get the net here ready for you. It's coming over here. I want to move that other rod. Okay. Oh, is it? Good fish? Yeah, I think so. All right, here, let me get up in front of you here. Okay. Get that rod up a little higher here, and I'll stick these underneath you. Oh, yeah. Look oh, yeah. That. There we go. Yeah. That's a way to start the morning. <laughs> wow. Nice <laughs> fish. That's why we're here, right there, huh? <laughs> oh, oh wow. man. What a beauty. Great fish. Great start to the morning, huh? It is. Wish every morning began with one of those. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Came right off that break. That fish is laying right where it should be. Yeah, it's right on the edge. There's this little chop flowing in here and sitting right on top of it. Nice Beautiful. work. Beautiful fish. If you look at the Missouri River Reservoirs, you got Fort Peck, Lake Sakakawea, Lake Oahe. Those three reservoirs in particular, you know, they really cycle with high water and low water. You know, and they're all tremendous walleye fisheries. But I tell you what, Lake Sakakawea is just firing on all cylinders right now. I mean, it's just at the top of the cycle. I don't know if it can get any better. I mean, it's just lots of fish. There's lots of bait fish. These fish have phenomenal growth rates. And, you know, the thing about it is this water goes down. You know, you lose the smelt populations, the fishery suffers, but then that terrestrial vegetation grows up on the shoreline. You put 20, 30 feet of water on top of that shoreline and the productivity just goes through the roof. And that's when your smelt numbers come back. And that's when your walleye numbers explode. But talk about some tremendous fishing 
Lake Sakakawi is one of those hot fisheries right now. Yeah, the trolling cranks is just, I mean, it's just nice to cover water and, and uh, especially like today where we're kind of trolling this steep break where the lead core seems to really be nice because that you can use that speed and that up and down when you're turning and following that break, you get that rise and that fall that gets that bait and triggers a lot of strikes that way. Oh, there's one, yeah. There you go, there you go. Yeah. It drilled it and then it kind of looped back and now it's putting some weight to it. Oh yeah, this feels like a good fish. How does he feel? Big real, fish? Good, yeah. All right. He's real good. He just smoked it. And then, <laughs> then the line came back like I thought we missed him. And he was still there, though. Stand down nice. Oh, oh he's hooked in the cheek, kind of funny, yeah. but good eater. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice fish. That fish yeah, can go in the live well, huh? Yeah, definitely. long stick baits they get caught on them all over the place they do all right nice eater yeah we need some of those too for tonight right that's correct can't beat a fresh fish fry Here on Lake Sakakawea, we have a really abundance of fish, and sometimes when we look at our graphs, we kind of think they're on simulator mode, and they just they just show us fish like crazy. But one one little tip that I got here is is really learn to adjust some of the settings. And um, on these Lorance uh, HDS Live units, they come with they start their standard sonar setting is color palette one, and with color palette one, it has like a blue as the lightest signal, and then an orange, and then a yellow as the heaviest or the strongest signal. And what times, a lot of times you see is when fish start stacking up together and you get into a lot of fish um, with that yellow color pattern or three color palette, um, a lot of times you get into fish and they start looking like real nice marks, but you're, all you're catching is small fish. And that's a settings adjustment that you need to make to really do that. So here we have color palette one on this Lawrence uh, HDS Live 16 inch unit. And I'm gonna just show you how to switch that color palette. You get to your, your um, menu bar here on the side. If you have it auto hit, you can just hit your menu button or hit the menu button in the corner. Um, you go down here to more more options, more options, stop sonar split, and then you have color palette. And you get here and you have lots of different options. There's actually 14 different options. You can pick all sorts of different things. Um, I haven't experimented with all of them, but color palette 13 is the one. And now as we get to that, if you notice when we switch from color palette one, it's got yellow in the marks, but then we go here to color palette 13, and you can see a little bit of green in some of those. And that green is what separates the color palette 13 from color palette one, in my opinion. When you start getting that green setting, and that shows you where some bigger fish are. Just gotta adjust your color line a little bit. If you have your color line too high, um, it'll read green on those smaller fish. So if you're catching smaller fish and you just keep continuing to catch smaller fish, lower that color line a few points. So you see here we have some real nice fish showing up on the screen. They're starting to see some green in those marks. And now if we can just get those ones to bite, it would be fantastic. Uh, but we're starting to see that green in the mark on these fish. If you pan over here to this other one in yellow, you, you can see yellow, 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 but it doesn't give us any separation. Like it just, it's really hard to see that size difference. Or if we go back here again, this green, you can really see the green. And that's that's one of the big things. Good I, fish, I, good fish. Oh, we got one on too. <laughs> oh yeah, nice walleye. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish, nothing wrong with that. Great walleye, and these stick baits, this time of year, big long stick baits, right in the hard part of the beak. You know, on lakes like Lake Sakakui, you've got a smelt forage base. These fish are just keying in on these smelt. All right. 
Fun, fun. Love it when those rods bang back. Love trolling. All right, let's get another one. Trolling crankbaits, the biggest thing I like is just to cover water. And like when these fish spread out and we talk about location on, these, on this big expansive reservoir like Sakakawea, uh, they just spread out and they when they spread out like on this big flat there were it's you know it's pretty flat and there's a lot of area to troll and they just are scattered it's not you don't see them stacked up and then you can just cover more water going that two to two and a half even up sometimes up to three miles an hour in some cases where you can cover that water and you can just put your baits in front of that many more fish you're going to just be a lot more successful uh, with the baits going by that many fish compared to a bottom bouncer at let's say one mile an hour uh, just by the sheer numbers game you go by two and a half times more fish Fish on, all right. Oh, we got one here too. Well, Doubled. Doubled up. All right, what do you got? Feels decent. Yeah, this one is too. A little head shake, but. I got a little pike. I got a walleye. Oh, come here. Oh, almost knocked it off. <laughs> kind of a big almost one to too, lift in. <laughs> almost too big to do that with, huh? <laughs> Look at that shape. Bellies on those fish, just healthy. Oh, there's a fish. Fish, there we go. Yep. Look like a good one there. Yeah, right, right on, the, right on that corner. Yeah, we're Hope just about ready to turn. Kind of came up a little shallower too. Yeah. Feels okay. All right, I'm yeah. coming with the net here. Decent weight to it. Oh yeah. Nice walleye. Fish. Nice yeah. work, nice work. Yeah, that's a nice fish. There's a fish. There you go. Go ahead and Ooh, grab it. That, yeah. yeah, that fish hit it like the way it's supposed to, huh? I just love how aggressive these fish hit. Oh, they just smoke it. So you know, you get in the late summer, and at least for me, my tackle bench ends up being a mess. My boat's not nearly as clean, but this is the time of year where I love pulling these deep diving stick baits, especially pulling them on lead core, you know, pulling that, that big profile over deep water, you know, especially like on Lake Sakakawea, you know, running off the old channel edges where basically you're finding these smelts stacked up along that sharp break, and you're finding those walleyes relating to those smelt. And so one of the things that we wanted to do when designing the rumble stick, we really saw a need for a deep diving balsa bait. So you see that, that pointed bill, very long, thin profile, but it's just got a really delicate fluttering action. And you know, that's one of the things that you can do with a balsa bait is, you know, balsa versus injection molded plastic. I mean, there's a time and place for both, but you can get a real delicate flutter with balsa that you just can't duplicate with injection molded plastic. And so that was really a niche or a need that we saw in the crankbait market when we were designing the rumble stick. There's times where those fish want that, just that tight, delicate shimmy. And that's what you get with that rumble stick. And there's a lot of different situations. You know, we're seeing it on Fort Peck, we're seeing it on Sakakawea, we're seeing it on Lake Hawaii, you know, where these fish are, you know, basically relating to that old river channel. They're eating a pelagic bait fish, whether it's a smelt, whether it's a white fish or a cisco. And these fish just want that long, thin, narrow profile, but that delicate action, a lot of times where it's at, especially in clear water, you know, especially when you don't have a lot of waves or a lot of wind and those fish are just off a little bit. You just run that subtle profile past those fish and above those fish and, you know, it's just too much for them. And so just a very, very effective crankbait. So we've got a couple of different sizes. We've got several different color options, you know, basically just the color patterns that, you know, we had a lot of confidence in. We got the profile right, we got the bill right, the action right, most of all it catches fish. And so late summer, mid-summer from say middle of July on when these fish key off that, you know, off the structure, they start chasing around those smell, chasing around that pelagic bait fish. You want that longer, narrow profile, this rumble stick gets it done.
Right out in front of that cow. <laughs> of course. <laughs> cows are good luck. Yeah. yeah Why do cool. fish bite in front of cows? That's the great mystery of the world. <laughs> Nobody has an answer for. I think the walleyes are attracted to the mooing. <laughs> it's been a fun day. We've caught a lot of fish, man. This is good, good fishing. Yeah, it is. It's it's been just an unbelievable summer. Like it's August and it still keeps yeah, going. Like you guys are spoiled. You wonder when it's gonna quit. Like or is it gonna slow down? And it just keeps going. So yeah. at 30 feet and it's still down. Must... Yeah. A uh, pretty special resource. Yeah. 15. All right. Let's see what you got here. Oh yeah, this one. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. There, nice work. Yeah. Yeah, fish are healthy looking, aren't they? They, they haven't are. missed too many meals. <laughs> the fat on the cleaning tables is crazy. You know, one of the things I love about trolling crankbaits for walleyes is the chess game in the sense that Every day you go out, you know, you're trying to find the lure that's working, you're trying to find the color, you're trying to find the speed, the amount of line out, the depth, you know, there's a lot to it. And I think sometimes people, they look at trolling and think, oh, that's boring, or oh, you're just dragging lures around. I tell you what, if you have your hands in your pockets and you're not working at it, you're probably not going to catch fish trolling. I mean, trolling is a lot of work. I mean, you're, you're bringing lines in, you're bringing lines out, you're, you know, you're adjusting lines, you're changing lures, you're cleaning lures off. I mean, it is a lot of work. You have to hustle. A lot of times the best trollers that I know are hustlers. They're hustling all day trying to put it together. But when you put those chess pieces together, it's magical. I mean, it's just, I'll never get tired. I mean, to me, it's almost like watching a bobber disappear into the water. When that rod's in the rod holder and it just bangs back and sometimes you hear that clicker go, you know it's a big fish. I mean, I, I just love watching those fish pound those crankbaits. And I think the just how violent these strikes are, I think that's a big part of it too, is you know, you're going two, two and a half miles an hour, there's no doubt in your mind when a fish hits. I mean, it's just, even with a bunch of lead core out the back, I mean, there's, there's no doubt in your mind when a fish smacks that lure. It's just the most violent strikes you'll ever see. And so I love trolling. I mean, it's a great way to catch fish, a great way to cover water. It's just effective, it's deadly. You know, I don't care what I gotta do to catch fish. And there's a lot of days, a lot of times in the summertime, especially where if you're willing to troll cranks, you're gonna probably catch a lot of walleyes. How's that one feel? Uh, feels about the same. Feels like an eater. Yeah. Now let me know when you get closer. I'll get the net here for you if you need it. 50 feet. Okay. Stand down though, so. Oh, well, it might surprise you. It's always good when they stay down. Yeah. yeah I'll get 20 the, feet. I'll get the net here just in case. You know, we've got a lot of fish today, you know what? Oh yeah, yeah nice walleye. Oh yeah, nice mouth on it. There we go. This lake is full of fish right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that walleye. Get them out of the net here for you. See you what, they're eating these rumble sticks, aren't they? They are. You're a fish, but <laughs> Hold it, throw it back. Yeah, <laughs> great walleye. All right, nice work. Been a fun day. It has. Appreciate you coming out. and. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Yeah, this is fun. I always love getting back here. Great day of fishing. Yeah, it was.